Hey, what's up you guys and welcome back to Gal. If you guys are new to my channel, I make photo, video, as well as audio tutorials on this channel and I do them weekly, or at least I try to. So in this particular uh, video tutorial, I'm teaching you um, how to make an image that was shot in the daylight transform to like it was shot during the night. So rather than using Photoshop or Lightroom, I'm showing you an alternative software and it's called Luminar. Luminar is by Skylum and it's gained a lot of credit in the photography industry. There's a lot of trainers that have been using it such as Rich Harrington, Alba Shapiro, which are master trainers in our industry. One thing I wanted to reiterate about Luminar is that unlike Adobe, which you have to pay per month as a subscription, you just have to buy Luminar once and it's $69. You pay once and you can use that license up to five different computers. So really it's a freaking amazing tool. So download it. You can also download the photo that I use in this tutorial. It's from Unsplash and Unsplash is an amazing resource where you can get free public domain dedicated images that photographers from all over the world have said, hey, you can use my image for free. So the image that I chose is from, let me just look it up here, Isabel Retamales. You can see it's a little boat image right here. And I thought it was a super cool image with a bunch of seals on a boat. And I said, it's actually the perfect shot to illustrate this exact technique. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial in Luminar. All right, so here we are in Luminar 3. You see that we're in a gallery mode looking at all the photos that I have in my library. Now the library is one of the new features of Luminar 3. You can add folders to Luminar um, that contain folders in them so that way you can choose which photos you want to edit. And it's a nice visual display so that way you can easily select the image. For example, this image is the boat that we want to change tonight. And on the right, you can see this is the final result. So let's go ahead and select this image and then just go to the single image mode. And this is where we can begin editing. Now there's a bunch of presets at the bottom, but I'm gonna get rid of those just by clicking on this button right here. So that way we have a bigger image to work with. Also, we can get rid of the film strip on the left. So now we can start editing. Just click on the edit tab. And here we're going to work in the essentials workspace. There are other workspaces that you can choose depending on what photo that you're working in. But in this case, I'm just gonna start with the essentials. And we're also going to add a lot of filters too using this button throughout the editing process. So the first step in this particular case is to reduce the exposure because it's nighttime. So let's just make the photo darker. Let's also decrease the temperature towards more of a cooler tone because at night it's much more cooler. We can also reduce some of the highlights. We can boost some of the whites and reduce some of the blacks as well. So now that we're doing that, let's go ahead and move along here and we'll make further adjustments. So the Accent AI filter is a trademark filter. If you boost that, you can see it just overall enhances the image. You don't want to do it too much, but you can see it just overall makes the image look so much better than with it off. If I turn this off, you can just see, wow, it just brings out a lot more um, contrast and detail. So I'm just going to have it around, I would say 44 looks pretty good. And the sky enhancer is a similar effect, but just enhances the sky. And you can see as I boost this up, what I really like about this is that it actually makes the sky a little bit darker. And since it's nighttime, that's exactly what we want. I'm not going to use the saturation or the vibrancy. I'm actually going to just delete that filter by hitting that X. And the polarizing filter, let's not use that. Let's just X out of that. Now structure is pretty cool. You can actually add more detail. Let me zoom into the boat here. And as I increase the amount, you can see, whoa, it's a lot more structure. And we don't want that amount. It's, I think, overkill in this case. So let's just reduce that ever so slightly. Just want a little bit of structure. So go from that to this. I think that looks pretty good. All right, let's zoom back out. A nice way to do that is just fit to screen. So you can kind of get a picture of what it looks like. And then you can kind of see if the structure is a little bit too much. Let's just reduce that down a bit. Perfect. Now curves, curves is interesting. We could always mess with curves later on too, but if you add a point down here, you can actually reduce or boost up. So this is adjusting the luminance of the shot, which is the brightness. So I'm just going to reduce that a bit so it gets a little bit darker, looking a lot more like nighttime right now. 
and then I'll have one up here too just to get a ever so slight curve to add a little bit more contrast. So immediately we can press this button up here to do a before and after slide. You can already see it's looking a lot more like nighttime right now. Let's just turn that off. Now we can add a vignette to add some style around the corners to have some oval black kind of shaded area around the image. I'm not a huge fan of too much of a vignette like this. I just like it to be kind of subtle. So that's good. Let's close off vignette. And now we can add in some of our own filters to start to really texturize this image to make it more seem like it's darker in the sky and also add in some lights as well. So let's go ahead and let's apply a top and bottom lighting. Now this is a pretty cool effect because it literally allows you to reduce the lighting in the top of the image or increase the brightness in the top. So because the sky, I want it to be a bit darker, I'm just gonna reduce that. And also down here, you can lighten up the bottom of the image or decrease it as well. So you can play around with these sliders until you get the image to be just the right amount of darkness that we need. Remember, we're gonna enhance the image a little bit more, but I think this is looking pretty good. So now that the lighting of the actual image is starting to look more like nighttime, we will add more filters later on to make it more darker as well. But first, let's go ahead and add in our lights. And I use a filter called Sunrays, and it's actually under the creative section. So click on Sunrays, and this will actually create a kind of cheesy looking sun in the left and just click on place sun center to move the center of this sun ray into the location that you want. Now here I want to create kind of like a lighthouse or a boat in the distance. So I'm just going to pla place this at the horizon. And the next step is to remove that center dot so we can see what's going on. So unclick place sun center and now let's increase the penetration. And then what we want to do is reduce the radius so it's not so big there. And then of course we don't want that many rays, so let's reduce the number, all right? And let's reduce the glow amount, and let's reduce the glow radius a bit. I think that's looking good. Let's reduce the length just a tad and reduce the amount. And then we kind of get a more natural looking light in the distance. Let's make this even smaller so it's not so big and let's Again, adjust the center just by clicking on it, and then we can move this around until it's in place. And I think it's looking a bit better here. We may want to reduce the look just a tad. This will make it overall darker, and this will make it brighter if we slide it to the right. So somewhere in between looks good to me. if we reduce the penetration just a little bit more, it looks pretty good. All right, so let's leave that alone for now. The next step is to create a light in the front of the boat because as it gets darker, we wanna add a light in front of the boat. So let's go ahead and add another sun ray. And then let's go ahead, place center in the front of the boat here. And then we have to, again, play around with the parameter. So I'm just going to quickly play around with these parameters. Let me close down filters catalog until I get it looking right. Alright, now that I have all of the parameters where I want it to, I'm just going to add a little mask on top of this by clicking this brush tool. So once I click on the brush, what I can do is I can reduce the opacity of the mask to around 35%. And then I can click erase and I can just gently erase on top of this to make it less intense on the side. So you can see it just made it a lot more subtle. And then I'm going to add a second sun ray just in front here as well to add more of an effect at a distance. So again, let's just place this in front. And then I'm just going to quickly go through the parameters to adjust it so it looks more in line with what a boat light would look like. I can't believe it, but I'm 
All right, so now that I have this in place, again, I'm going to do an opacity mask on top of this so it's not quite as bright. So I'm just going to click on this brush tool again, and I'm going to make the opacity 38%, and then I'm just going to gently erase on top so it's not as bright around the sides too. And that is the front light in action. So that's what it looks like. And now we need to focus on the inside of the boat. Now, if it was around nighttime at this time, the boat would likely have some sort of light inside of the cabin here. So what I'm going to do is add another sunray effect. So you'll see I'm gonna be using a lot of sun rays. And it's funny because a sun ray is not intended for this use at all, but it's pretty cool what you can do to multi-purpose these effects. So let me close down this one. And once again, I'm going to bring this radius actually on the inside here where this middle window is, and I'm going to increase the penetration so it looks quite bright. And then I'm going to increase the warmth so it's a bit warmer of a light, like a tungsten color. And then rather than playing around with these effects, what I can do is just add a mask. So click the brush tool, and then I'm going to turn the mask on. I'm going to click paint, and I'm going to reduce the size, and I'm going to zoom in here and I'm just going to paint a mask around this area. It's a red color, and let's actually make the opacity not 38%, let's increase it, and we can drop the size a bit as well. So now we can make our mask directly where this window is, and you may need to make this a little bit smaller too, so we can get the details in here. So then what we can do is turn off the mask and you can see what it looks like underneath. What we can do down here is continue to paint with the mask turned off and you can see what will happen as well. We can make it a little bit more smooth around here. And then let's go ahead and erase the edges so it's more central to the window and not on the border. It's more clean that way. All right. And now you can see that it looks like a light is on inside. And if you want to reduce the amount, you can just reduce the penetration just a tad so it's not quite as bright. So now if I want to have light coming through this window here, what I can do is add another sun ray. So let's go ahead and make another sun ray. I told you it was going to be a lot of sun rays here. So let's place the sun center just behind this boat. And you will see that because it this software uses a lot of AI, it'll auto detect an opening here. So it looks like the sun is coming. So if I move it this way, you can kind of change the rotation depending on what you like. But I think this is super cool here. So what I'm going to do is just select this area and then I'm going to basically erase all the rest of the sun rays around here. So that way I'm just isolating this ray that's coming through the window. So to do that, I'm going to use the brush tool and I'm going to increase the size a bunch. I'm going to just erase all of these just by clicking and erasing. And now you can see it's just that area. And if I want to turn on the mask, you can see what's happening here. So if I wanted to erase all of this here, it's just easier to see what I'm erasing. And over here as well. So it's just that area right here. So if I turn this off, you can still see it's just that ray of light there. So again, it's a bit strong. It looks unnatural. So I'm going to reduce the length a bit like that. And I'm going to reduce the amount just a tad. All right. So just by playing with the amount and the length, it's at a pretty cool spot. So if I turn that off, you can see it just added that nice little luminance of light coming out of the window that was not there before. So the next step is to add two more sun rays, one on the left and one on the right. Now, because I already walked through this process, I'm going to speed up because I don't think you guys want to watch me do another sun ray effect two more times, but then I will stop 
when I have to add some brightness contrast to these windows. So let's just go ahead and do our sun rays. And then at this moment, I'm going to actually change the blend mode to a soft light because it almost looks too bright here. So if I click soft light, it'll make it appear a little bit more natural. And we'll add some more brightness contrast later on to this to make it more realistic. So then the same thing to the right window. Let's add another sun ray and I will just speed up through this process. The next effect I'm going to add is a brightness effect. So if I scroll on down here, I'm rather than do brightness and contrast, I'm going to use the exposure effect. And now you're going to say, you know, why am I increasing the exposure like this? Because it just makes it more bright again. What I'm going to do is just isolate this brightness to these windows here. So if I scroll in here, what I'm going to do is use the brush tool on the exposure. So if I click this arrow here, choose a mask tool. So I'm just going to paint a mask here. So I'm just making this area bright. Do you see that? So I'm just making the window itself more bright. So rather than add the sun ray effect like the other ones, this is another way of doing it. Like so just add a little bit of brightness. Same on this window here. So you can see that it's just isolating this exposure effect to this mask in the window. So now if I zoom back out, you will see that it's just isolated to those two windows there. Now, if I want to make these two windows brighter at all, I can do the same thing. I can just paint again on top. And what it's doing is it's making a mask of the brightness on these areas as well. And what I'm doing right now is I'm painting another mask on this window and it's also adding the brightness filter to just this area of the image. And now if I think it's too bright and then I can just reduce this however much I want and see how it looks. So see how I'm just like brightening those. So I think around there it looks good. So that's how you brighten up windows. It's a kind of nuanced um, process using a variety of sun rays and exposure levels. And there is a couple other filters I want to show you. There is a details enhancer. So if you want to add in further detail, you can use a details enhancer to really get nuanced, detailed work happening. So you can boost up the small, the medium, and even the large details in the image. And it will just make that image pop a whole lot more, more so than just the standard structure filter. And then there's also a pretty cool filter called golden hour. So this is when it, the sun starts to set and it's under creative. And if you apply this effect, you can add just a tad bit. If you go too overboard, it starts to look a little distorted. So I'm just going to add just like a tad bit amount of golden hour just to give it a little bit of that look. Um, and I think that's looking pretty good. One other thing I want to do is remove this little it looks like a little glitch on the lens or a little piece of dust, but it's actually a bird. But with the AI technology inside of Luminar, you can actually use a tool up here called Erase. And once you click on the tool, it'll prepare the image and then you can zoom in as much as you want here. I'm just scrolling in with my mouse that I have. And then I'm just going to literally just draw over this with this tool make sure all of it, even the edges are included like so, and then just hit erase and it will start to process it and bam, it's gone. And just one more time, let me just select the erased image layer here. So you can see that the bird disappeared. If I select the original boat, you can see that it appears. So you just need to make sure that that top layer is select. So that way the bird is gone. And just one last time, let's go ahead and do the before and after so you can really see the difference that took place. So before and after, which is pretty amazing. So have fun with this tool. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below. So I hope that you guys found this tutorial useful. I think Luminar is an amazing tool that I'm going to use going forward for all of my different photos 
that I shoot. And remember, you can also create your own presets in Luminar just like you can in Lightroom. And if you guys want a tutorial on how to do that, just let me know in a comment below. So again, download Luminar with the link in the description and that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. So if you guys are still watching at the end of this tutorial, be sure to check out my Patreon where you guys can donate a monthly amount to support my effort here on YouTube to share useful tips and tricks every week. So there's a button right over there that you can click to check it out. Thank you guys again and namaste.